1388 that's the number of days i have been a medical student and that's roughly 4 years and i faced a lot of challenges in this journey from studies to friendship to competition and what not especially while trying to balance so many things together and through this video i'd like to share 15 of these tips that you would apply to your med school life and make it much much more smoother hey everyone my name is anush prashail and i'm finally mbbs student at gmc nagpur and welcome back to our channel if you haven't subscribed already consider doing so well the first point is make a lot of friends and accept the fact that without your friends your college life will suck a lot if you don't have friends your clinical postings will not be interesting your lectures won't be interesting and basically there won't be any fun reason to go to college it will be always for learning and learning you also get to try out so many different things with friends which you normally would not have tried out otherwise because you can go to trips or you can do things which you normally would not do also this especially helps during exam times because if you have good friends you could share your progress with them and they could help you with certain topics that you don't know with friends you can also go to seniors and do much more daunting tasks especially in first year our friends are our family because most of you guys are going to be staying away from your hometown and that's going to be taking a toll on your mental health uh, because that's most likely the first time that you're leaving your home within the first 3 months that you're in med school uh, it's really important to find a group good group of people whom you could potentially share a lot of things of your life with don't be afraid to make friends and also remember the fact that you're going to be losing a lot of friends in the process as well and this attrition is there because your personality changes and evolves as you go through med school so you won't be the same person that you entered you will be a completely different person when you come out of med school that's going to happen to everyone so you're going to lose friends at the same time you're going to make friends as well so it will be a balanced act and accept that fact and it's absolutely awesome to see that the people you start your first year with are not the people you end your final year with so it's a very surprising realization which you hopefully will have once you are in med school next point is seek discomfort yes this is a line which one of my favorite youtube channel call as yes theory says and that's their entire brand that is seek discomfort so what is comfort in the first place you wake up you go to college come back home study and then you sleep and the cycle repeats all over that's your comfort your brain does not want to break out of this comfort zone because well it's too comfortable so i urge you to seek discomfort comfort do the things which you don't usually would have done so let's say you have never played sports in your entire life but there's a sports club being formed in your college seek discomfort and join that sports club even if you're bad maybe they will reject you but maybe they won't and you would find yourself in a new position that you would not have if you did not go out of your comfort zone the same way even if you're not good at anything at least participate in it i'm not good at singing or dancing or whatever but i participated in a lot of different activities when i was presented with them during my college life of like first and second year and also know that in first and second year these are going to be your best best years of college life because you won't really have to worry about pg preparation or going to clinical postings that much but you will have so much free time in your hands that you could build upon so many different skills and so many different hobbies that you might want to explore one other way for me to seek discomfort was to start this youtube channel and put a video out every single sunday i did that through lockdown and i'm still doing it right now in fact i upload even more right now so i love the fact that i started it and if i would not have started it just out of curiosity i would not have done it i also gave lectures to first year students for anatomy when i was in second year and that's another way of me doing things which i normally would not have done so do these because these will define who you are and they will make good memories and you will feel really happy after doing these things third mind attend all practical classes in first year dissection is the most important practical class that you will attend because it's exclusively available in first year and you won't get it anywhere else practice all your skills over there and uh, learn the different relations of the different body parts and never miss a single class of dissection because it's something magical and the way you will learn anatomy after dissection is much much more different than you will read let's say even after reading gray's anatomy so attend dissection and attend all practical classes in second year you will be having a lot of labs and attend all of these labs because all of these things in pathology and microbiology will make up the basics for medicine and surgery and what not in other subjects the most fun that you're going to have is going to be in dissection as well as biochemistry because those are the two things which are absolutely amazing according to me i did not attend a lot of second year practical classes because of covid but whichever ones i did attend it was truly truly amazing one awesome tip that i would like to give you is that whenever you're going to practical classes read a bit about the theory of whatever you're going to do in the practicals it really really helps out a lot especially when the discussion starts because then it becomes really awesome because you're able to answer a lot of questions that is which brings me to my next point is that in third and fourth year you will be having not practical classes but you will be having clinical postings yes and in my last video of sunday i actually said this that don't miss any clinical postings yes i still stand by that fact and i still feel like if you don't do clinical postings no matter what you're going to do in life you won't be a doctor because you won't know how to treat patients you won't know how the presentation is you will read in the book okay, okay this is the presentation of the patient but once you see that patient it's going to be solidified in your memory and one pro tip about going to the wards and going to the medical rounds is find one good person from that department be it a jr sr or professor or something like that you know they will help you a lot through this so gladly in gmc we are blessed with so many people who are totally interested in teaching us so we can just walk into a ward and ask them to teach us and they would you know help them out with whatever we want to so maybe your college is not like that so find somebody who is willing to teach you a lot of things because going to wards can be a bit difficult especially if they don't give you attention in the initial years like first and second year but once 
once you start doing it consistently and you find a person who will actually teach you now it all becomes so much helpful one thing which you should definitely do is that even if you don't have medicine as a subject in second year go to the medicine ward and go to the surgery ward and see different patients because that is the subject you're going to be encountering it in the final year and if you learn the basics of history taking clinical examination it will be super super awesome next point is read standard textbooks one thing which i really like is that i saw this lecture about evidence-based medicine so evidence-based medicine is that we are doing all the treatments and all the management based on previous evidences of what has worked and what has not similarly if you go to a bad college and there are seniors who are not that academically inclined they will come up to you and say that don't read standard textbooks use this good guy and you will pass they will give you wrong advices like uh, read forensic medicine only like five or six days before the exam that is absolutely wrong you have to stick to what's evidence-based and what's evidence-based is that reading standard textbooks really really helps you out a lot in life and so if you're a student who is very very confused whether should i buy gaitan or ganong or whatever for physiology go ahead and at least try that book out for at least a month from your li library and find out if it works for you if it does read standard textbooks because they will explain things to you in a way which is exactly correct and which is research based and accepted all over the world the indian textbooks of course you have to use them but keep them exclusively for exams but use the standard textbooks something like Bailey and love hutchinson williams or something like that we have a very good trend in gmc that uh, a lot of our good seniors read only and only standard textbooks so we are only inclined to do that so i have a few seniors in my life who have really guided me a lot and showed me what to study what not to study how to actually be in life and one of the most important seniors is my sister who is currently in thane pursuing her md pathology but he has guided me a lot and find a non-toxic senior in your life and i also have a lot of seniors in my college who have uh, done a lot of things such as research which i'll come to in a minute and they're, they're guiding me through what i have to do and i'm really thankful to them for this you'll have to do a bit of trial and error and talk to different people and give them respect and most of the times they will end up helping you out so much next thing is a bit surprising but uh, it's off the topic but don't get into a relationship in first year mbbs because you're just here in medical college you don't really know a lot of stuff and uh, you might end up breaking up with the person you fell in love with most most of the times you are going to be ending up in a breakup which will spoil some part of your next year so at least wait for first year you know mature a bit more in medical college and then you can you know think about all of these things and this is speaking from experience yes i did have a pretty bad breakup at the end of first year so yeah don't do it next point read a lot of stuff read a lot of stuff because reading is the only way you're going to acquire knowledge in mbbs uh, i see a lot of comments saying that okay if you watch only the marrow videos then you will be totally awesome with everything i you know frankly just totally disagree with those comments because i feel without reading there's no way you can understand medicine or you can understand the way our systems work lectures are one thing because they are very concise and they are on to the point for pg preparation but reading a book is something else entirely so read a lot of books if you can personally i'll just give you an example for anatomy in first year i had a lot of time i was not making these youtube videos i had this time to read gray's anatomy read bdc read vishram singh as well as read as well as read snellens for neuroanatomy and so many other things for miscellaneous subjects like histology embryology and whatnot so yeah read a lot because it will give you so much clearer idea about that subject you know people say that reading is very very difficult the reading speed is not that much but if you don't read much you won't ever increase your reading speed how do you get good at driving a car you practice it a lot right the same way if you are slow at reading if you read more and more and more books eventually you your reading speed will definitely go up it will really help you out a lot in the next few years because the volume of reading just completely increases and increases every single year in comparison we have three subjects in first year we have nine subjects in final year so yeah that's the amount of things you will have to manage in one year the ninth point is use good resources and rely on the resources which will help you out in first year i think that you should go ahead with the subscription of kenhub they are not sponsoring this video i genuinely feel that kenhub is an anatomy learning platform and i will i feel like it will really really increase your performance in second year you should definitely go ahead and buy marrow because because at that time you will be able to revise the first year subjects as well as well as the second year things as well so mid second year is the point where you should be considering buying marrow and do all the lectures from second year and then go to first year i really love the lectures of dr ranjan kumar patel who is the pharmacology faculty over there and he has made pharmacology really really easy which was very difficult uh, to understand for me personally as well as lectures of krishna kumar sir who teach physiology in the first year classes so if you watch these two things you will be really really good in medicine as well in medicine you will see that rakesh nair sir will talk about uh, going to physiology going to pharmacology a lot of the times what you should also do is develop a hobby of solving question bank from marrow every single year and you sh your minimum target should be to do the question bank of that particular year when you are in that year so if you are in second year you should minimum have done the question bank of first year as well as second year in third year at least third year then second year and first year do this habit and use the qbank tracker which is present in the marrow app which will really help you out why i'm telling you marrow is because i personally have used it and instead of talking about other platforms which i have never ever used in my life marrow is the one which you should absolutely go for which brings me to my next point is that be aware about pg preparation from the initial years so in first year you don't have to worry about anything don't even think about pg preparation just enjoy college life as much as you want to but from second and third year you have to be mentally inclined towards pg preparation you should know that i have to complete these amount of question banks i have to revise marrow at least once or twice whichever one works for you and i need to read a lot of standard books and go to clinical cases and think about everything through a pg perspective of view as well rather than just preparing for your proper university examinations personally what i've seen from different interviews of toppers which are present on youtube
YouTube is that most of them say that preparing early will give you a lot of head start uh, compared to others. And that's pretty obvious because you are reading it from a long period of time. So yeah, have a mental inclination towards PG preparation from the starting itself. Once you're in third year, try to do at least two more subjects from final year in Marrow itself. I would suggest going with at least one long subject as well as one short subject. So, so something like Ops and Gynae plus Radiology would be the best combination because you're going to learn a lot of things in third year itself. And when you're, once you're in final year, do all the subjects which are present in Marrow because they are awesome. As well as start giving tests when you are in third year MBBS. So many tests which are present in the Marrow app are a great way to analyze your scores as well as to get to know wh where you are actually standing in the competition. Uh, your rank will be pretty low in third year but as you study a lot of, lot of subjects, your rank will gradually keep on increasing. In short, first year don't worry, second year buy Marrow and do a lot of videos and question banks. In third year start giving tests and complete a few more subjects of final year and in final year do everything that Marrow has to offer. While you are also oriented for PG, make, make sure that you are also indulged in making your CV strong as well as doing more things than usual. So something like conducting a research would be the best thing for you. Uh, there are so many different programs, one of them is ICMR STS and you can apply for that and the best way is that go to a department and tell them I want to do a research and they will guide you a lot through it instead of me just guiding you. Based on my experience, you could just go ahead and talk to the department, they will really, really help you out. But the best department to go is community medicine because they are like the most research driven department that I've seen personally in my college. By the time you're done with MBBS, you should have a pretty good CV in your hand. And even if you don't, don't worry, there is a lot of things you can do in the future which will help you increase that. If you want a video for that, let me know. <sighs> there was a lot of academic stuff, but let me come back to one of the most important aspects in life that is money. Yes, money is very, very important. And that's why I want you to start a passive stream of income right when you are in MBBS. So you will, you won't have to worry about small things like rent or going outside to eat food or enjoying with friends and partying because money allows you to do s stuff like that. One of my friend Abhijit is a very good person and he actually helped author a book with one of our professors of college. And through that, he made quite a lot of income and that has really helped him sustain a lot of different things which he's currently doing. Similarly, I started this YouTube channel and there's also my app and my website. So all of these things really helped me out personally day to day because I'm able to sustain myself and also buy all the fancy equipments which you see in the videos. So find something which you are good at and do that. It does not necessarily have to be on online, something like making a YouTube channel because that requires a lot of skill and effort. It could be as simple as taking classes for students who are in need or taking classes for students who are in class 9, 10th. Just find some time and you can definitely do that at least when you are in second and third year because in final year time just gets out of hand. You should at least aim for earning like five to 10,000 rupees a month because that is more than enough for a student who is doing MBBS, at least from a government college. That would really relieve the pressure of your parents back to carry you lifelong. Next point, don't fall for stereotypes which are present in our society. People say that MBBS is so hard, you can't do it. You won't really get time to do anything in MBBS. So these are all stereotypes, which I don't know who has made, but I'm sure that you get a plenty of time. You also get a lot of opportunities to do whatever you want to do in life. So don't fall for these stereotypes, excel in your life, study a lot and make yourself proud and do something which the younger you would be proud of you for doing. And if you ever feel like this is difficult, well, think about the people who have done so much more than what you're currently doing and, and they're still thriving and excelling at everything they do. Lastly, subscribe this channel would definitely definitely help you out a lot and this is the most important tip of this video because making this videos take up a ton of time for the energy to make and subscribing in just two seconds would make up for all of that thank you so much for watching and it's your these are two other videos which i think you should watch and thank you so much again i'll catch you in the next one goodbye